how are you guys? Today we are going to continue with our course about the ecosystem. So this is the planning for today. Uh, the very first thing that we are going to explain today is the tolerance ranges and limiting factors that could affect our ecosystems. Secondly, uh, we are going to make a short introduction to uh, biotic and abiotic factors that could affect the, the environment, the ecosystem I mean. And finally, we are going to introduce the concept of biogeography and also we are going to talk about just a little bit uh, we are going to talk about, about the biomes okay? so this is the planning for today I expect you enjoy this too much today see you hi again today we are going to continue uh, by talking about the tolerance ranges okay? then we are going to explain a little bit about uh, environmental factors abiotic environmental factors and finally we're going to introduce the concept of biogeography and also we're going to talk about the biomes so let's begin today uh, here in, in your screen you can see the graph that it is showing us a tolerant range okay about these tolerant ranges are specific for uh, a specific species so uh, an environmental factor is limiting for any species, okay, and a specific species, when its value determines the abundance or distribution of these species, okay. So this is the, the important thing to remember. As you can see in the graph, sorry, because I'm going to try to, to draw here a little bit, just to show you, okay, uh, this one, okay, sorry, because I have to, okay, I'm here, here, okay, okay. This is the optimum. Okay, this is the optimum for for this species. Okay, that that means that in in this point. Okay, this is the we're going to explain the axis before. Okay, this is the environmental factor of value. This is the the high. Okay, this is the high and the low range. Okay, and just in the middle, imagine that this is temperature. We're going we are talking about temperature or or maybe light okay or light or I don't know oxygen or I don't know any other things okay so uh, if the temperature is too high that means that this species okay this is for uh, uh, population size of the species okay so here you don't have individuals for this species and here you, you have you have the the highest amount of individuals okay that means that if the temperature is too high okay if we are here there are no organisms because they, they, they can cope with the with the high temperature okay so this is called the intolerance zone okay imagine I don't know for um for a, I know, a, a kind of a mammal that they cannot live in in the desert, okay, in the middle of the desert, just because uh, the temperature is too high. So in this case, imagine that this is I don't know above uh, forty five degrees, okay. This organism cannot cannot live here. And the other way around, if the temperature is below, is below, I don't know, mm, below minus uh, five degrees. Okay, this mammal is not able to, to survive anymore in this environment, okay? So there are no organisms because the intolerance zone is this one, but this time for lower temperatures, okay? So what happens between, I don't know, a minus 5 degrees and 10 degrees, okay? You are going to find some organisms, few organisms here, okay? This is the, the zone of the environmental stress because this is not the adequate temperature for, for this kind of mammals, okay? And in the other way around, uh, if the temperatures are higher than, imagine, I don't know, 30 degrees, okay, I'm inventing this. Uh, you're going to find, uh, again, a few organisms, but just only a few, okay? Because they, they don't, uh, they, they cannot cope with this temperature too, okay? So, uh, the, uh, the tolerance range is this sound that starts in this point okay is between 10 degrees and 30 degrees okay imagine okay i'm inventing this just for showing you an example okay and just in the middle you're going to find the 
the maximum amount of individuals for this species okay so this is the the meaning of the tolerance range okay okay it's this place in which the the environmental factors are adequate or optimum for the reproduction of the, the individuals that belong to to a specific species okay so this this curve this graph is different from any kind of species okay you can consider, I don't know, different kinds of trees or plants, uh, pff, uh, different kinds of organisms, microorganisms, uh, pff, mammals, lizards, um, I don't know, any kind of, or of living being, okay, are going to have this cure, okay, and you have to consider this. And this is, uh, precisely, this is the limit of the distribution of the abundance of a uh, of the species throughout the world okay so if you have understood what is the tolerance curve we are going to continue with our explanation okay these are we are going to introduce the abiotic factors and the biotic factors okay abiotic and biotic factors okay these are environmental factors Okay. And when we talk about abiotic factors, we are talking about uh, non-living factors. I mean, uh, we mentioned them before: temperature, temperature, light, uh, oxygen dissolved in water. Okay, in this case, for example, okay, we can see here the temperature. This is the temperature, and uh, okay, there are no light here just because the the ice cap covering the lake. Okay, this is a lake, and in this lake, okay, the the temp and the, the abiotic factors vary uh, depending on the on the season. Okay, for example, in winter we're going to, to have this ice cap covering the lake, so this ice cap prevent from the sunlight to uh, to to introduce too much inside the lake. Okay, uh, the oxygen is not going to vary a lot, do you suppose? Okay, the temperature, you, you can see the temperature here. Okay, this is the gradient of temperature. Uh, it is colder in the surface, whereas in the deeper zones, are, the temperatures are higher. Okay, but in the spring, uh, this, there is a turnover. Okay, the heat comes up above, okay, comes up to the surface of the lake, so the lake becomes warmer in the surface and colder more or less and colder in, in deeper layers okay in the summer there is an stratification because yes it, the temperatures vary a lot because we've got a lot of heat okay here and uh, there is an stratification here okay so we can reach the the 20 the 21 degrees here in the surface we yes here okay the temperatures are colder there is a gradient of temperatures here and in the in the four there is a turnover again just to recover the the first step okay so in this case uh, we've got temperature life varies with seasons as well as as temperature okay oxygen varies in the lake um what else mm, okay and with with this i think temperature light oxygen and the amount of water okay and the amount of water too because in, in summer the, the normal uh, thing for a lake is to reduce its okay its amount of water okay uh, just because the rainfall is not the same as in in spring okay in in in, in summer uh, the rainfall uh, drops down a lot um, and that's it okay so the abiotic factors vary depending on depending on the season depending on the latitude depending on okay, I, I don't know the geography okay a, a, a lot of factors vary just for this biotic factors um, this is these are related with the other living beings that share the same environment with other species okay so we've got here the starfishes here okay and they are sharing uh, their environment with other species okay and they they can um, okay they, they can 
uh, have some competition with the others just for for obtaining the same resources okay we're going to to talk about these biotech factors later so we're going to to explain this a little bit better okay we're going to continue with this so this is the this is a list that i made for you about the abiotic factors okay all of these are abiotic factors okay i'm going to write this here abiotic factors okay so for example the very first thing that you have to consider is or are the energy and the energy sources or the energy resources okay the sunlight it's quite important for the plants okay because they are going to produce okay they are going to produce the aliment for for the rest of the of the um, of the animals okay and option up welling is related to the to the uh, okay how many nutrients can you find how many nutrients can you find in some areas of the ocean okay yes because uh, there are currents that they, they are forming the ocean depending on their temperatures of so some sometimes and that well it means that the cold water okay rises and reach, uh, reaches the surface so this cold water uh, it's full of nutrients okay full of microorganisms that are the, the basement of the of the food chain okay so uh, both of them sunlight for plants for terrestrial ecosystems and ocean upwelling for for aquatic ecosystems are too important as a source energy a source of energy okay so uh, the temperature is sorry i i can find myself okay the temperature is also important for a uh, especially for the distribution of of the species and another thing that we have to consider is the presence the type and changes in water okay we're talking about aquatic ecosystems uh, fresh water okay fresh water is also important for terrestrial ecosystems okay for terrestrial terrestrial ecosystems is important okay because um, we're going to, to see this again yeah, when you look at when you have a closer look at the at the globe, you can see that the the plants are distributed depending on the rainfall. Okay, so the the availability of fresh water is so important for the distribution of species of plants and animals. Okay, the salt water is another important thing for some kinds of species. Okay. A frozen water is also important if you remember from the first of from the first course of ESL is important okay just because they are the reservoir of fresh water in the world okay a big reservoir of fresh water and seasonal water changes as we we've just seen in the in the previous uh, example okay so uh, another thing nutrients and inorganic materials are also important because they are uh, important especially for for plants okay uh, because uh, without them they, they can grow grow up okay and uh, other factors in aquatic ecosystems for example the oxygen is important because the, the there is a gradient of oxygen uh, also in in both uh, freshwater aquatic ecosystems and saltwater too the salinity is also important for the distribution of species in aquatic ecosystems the presence of currents because they distribute the, the nutrients uh, the tides are quite important for coastal ecosystems and vents okay for terrestrials fires and winds okay uh, it's so important wind okay for the distribution of seeds and um, okay and fire it's important just to uh, keep the um, the presence of the uh, of a specific um, species that belong to a forest okay it, it, it's it's quite involved in the distribution of forests throughout the world okay uh, and both volcanism okay it's important too uh, tectonics and natural events Okay. natural events, I don't know, hurricanes, tornadoes, 
é, drops, é, I don't know, é, heavy rainfall, ok, this, this kind of things, ok, or natural disasters or something like that, ok, earthquakes, maybe, ok, this kind of things. So, let's, uh, let's continue with this and uh, let's take a closer look again just to see a couple of examples of this. Okay, I see it. So, we've got our Google Earth again, uh, just for taking a, a very quick view of these abiotic factors. Uh, this is our, our world, okay, uh, this is the equatorial zone. Uh, in, this, in this zone, we are going to sorry this one uh, we're going to have a high availability of light and also a uh, rainfall and also the temperatures are going to be warm through the year there are no seasons is so they are the perfect conditions for uh, the developing of tropical forests as you can see here okay if I'm going to the north uh, there is a lack of water in this. Uh, they are the tropical zones uh, located in the in the 30 degrees latitude. In this place, there are no water. Why? Because the distribution of um, of the currents of air in the troposphere determines that in these areas there are always high pressures, high pressures areas that are going to affect the distribution of rainfall in these places. So there is a lack of rainfall here, the temperatures are also high, there are no seasons in this area too, but uh, you, can, you can see that uh, it's important for the distribution of plants to have enough fresh water uh, just to, to develop these ecosystems. If I'm going to the north, to the temperate zone, uh, in these areas I'm going to have forests again, but this time, this time are going to be different from the tropical ones just because uh, they are full of deciduous plants uh, why, why, why do we have this situation here? just because the availability of light depends on the season of the year and also the availability of water it's uh, directly related to the season of the year Okay, so in the spring and autumn we are going to, to find in some areas, not all, not all of them um, we are going to have more availability of water than in, for example, a winter or summer, especially summer. Uh, if I'm going to the north again, I'm going to uh, to lose this in this forest just because the temperatures are too cold. If we take into account uh, the tolerant ranges uh, we've seen before. Mm, yeah, some plants are they, they cannot cope with the with these extreme conditions. So for that, the ecosystems vary again, and they are more adapted to the situation. And also remember that in the in the polar zones, uh, we've got six months of light and six months of of, uh, of night. Okay, so the daylight in this case uh, is the um, is the limiting factor in these places as well as temperature. So with this we finish this and uh, now we're going to talk about uh, biogeography and the biomes.